let's take a moment right now to talk about money. Money, 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 money. Yes, we love money. We are magnets for money. Money flows effortlessly to us in accordance with our concept of self. And when we are in alignment with our divine nature, meaning when we've stepped into that power position of our life to create, to serve, to shine, and to build, guess what? Money always finds us. We always have more money than we need and even more than we want. That's the law of the universe. When we stand in the vibration of that, in the vibration of divine self, and move in the momentum of our purpose, money always finds us. Now, how come so many of us struggle with money then? Well, the answer is clear. Because we don't have the appropriate self-concept. We don't understand how divine we are, nor do we understand how magnetic we are or how powerful we are, vibrationally speaking, when we're moving in our purpose. Instead, we labor under misconceptions around money and success. And because of these misconceptions, we create what's called an abundance ceiling. This is an energetic limitation that has been self-imposed by us based on our beliefs of self, who we are, what we do, and what we possess. And because of this energetic limitation, we cannot scale above that cap or that limit. We can't make more money than we're presently making. Or we can't succeed at higher levels or break through that barrier because something inside of us is keeping us from it. However, once we get our inside world in alignment with what's possible, we can change that. Remember, Jesus said, to him that believes it's possible, all things are possible. And so we must ask ourselves, what do I believe is possible of me? What do I believe is possible of my life experience? How powerful are you? How meaningful are you? How, how purposeful are you? How much of an impact do you make? Do you know this about yourself? Or... Are you laboring beneath an abundance or a success ceiling? Now, the thing about false beliefs and limiting ideas and misconceptions is that they are often unconscious, meaning we're not aware of them. But the screen of life always gives us clues as to what's happening. So here are a few signs that you are presently operating under an abundance ceiling, starting with... Whenever you get a surplus of money, it very quickly leaves your experience. Has this happened to you? Maybe you get a $5,000 bonus, hypothetically, and you're so excited. Oh, you know what you're going to do with that money. You're going to invest it in your business. Maybe you're going to buy some new clothes. Maybe you're going to put your children in some great programs. And then the very next day, something happens. Your roof springs a leak, your car dies, or your child calls and says, hey, mom, I need $4,500. I'm in trouble. And the money is gone as soon as it came in. Ooh, that is a hint that you are laboring under an abundance ceiling, that energetically you're just not able to keep more money and also draw in even more money than that. Another great sign that you are laboring under an abundance ceiling is that your bank account just doesn't change. Maybe your life experiences do. Maybe your jobs do. Maybe you even get that bonus. But when you go and check your checking account and your savings account, it's always around the same amount of money. Maybe some months you're up a little bit, some months you're down, but on average, you're staying the same. That's because You've got a cap on what you can make and what you can retain. Look, there's no shame here. The idea of lack and scarcity was modeled to so many of us in childhood by our parents, our family, our culture. We grew up speaking in the language of these concepts. Have you ever heard the term, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? 
Or have you heard the term the haves and the have nots creating this separation between us and them? Have you heard the term the filthy rich? This is all language that indicates beliefs that may exist inside of you or inside of the people around you who are constantly messaging that to you. We have to understand what's happening on the inside and pivot away from does, what does not serve, pivot away from what is the lie about money and success, and pivot towards what is healthy, the healthy principles of money. And we're going to talk about eight of those principles at the end of this lesson. But before we do, I just want to cover a few of the old, outdated, frequently modeled to us tropes about money. These are the lies about money that we have all heard before. Starting with money is the root of all. Complete that sentence for me. <laughs> I know that you can. Because I know you've heard that a million times. Money is the root of all evil. Did you know that was a scripture in the Bible? In fact, it comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. And it doesn't even read that way. It's not even accurate. The actual scripture says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. The love of money what that scripture is actually talking about is greed. And yes, we can all agree that greed is evil and damaging and has done tremendous destruction to the world, to the planet, and to people. But that's got nothing to do with money. Money, in fact, is neutral. Money is energy, and we're going to talk about that. That's a trope, that money is evil. It's the love of money that is evil, so get right with that. Next the outdated, antiquated idea that more money means more problems. Did you know that Will Smith once said that he was sued 20 times a year? 20 times a year. Can you even, can you even imagine? Now that may sound like more money, more problems, but that's really not what's going on because here's what's going on with money. When you have more money, you have more access. Energetically speaking, you have more landscape to move and to experience. Now, in that landscape, you're going to experience polarities. You're going to experience the lights and you're going to experience the shadow. So the more access you have and the more landscape you have, the more light you're going to have, but also the more shadow you will experience as well. That's okay. That's just the nature of it. Do you think because Will Smith gets sued 20 times a year that he doesn't continue to create? No, ma'am. He continues to create. He makes movies. I don't know if he's still making music, but he's probably investing. I know he's on YouTube. I know he's still out there producing and being creative and making that money. And <laughs> the more money he's got, the more he can spend on folks who can protect his money. You can sue him all you want, but he's got all kinds of attorneys. He's also got financial advisors. He's got accountants. He's got people. More money means more accesses and more resources. Yes, also more experiences, some of which might be negative, but way more resources to take care of it. So more money, more problems, eh, get out of here. The next trope that we need to talk about when it comes to money is, I don't deserve to have money. I don't deserve to have money. <laughs> I don't know why anybody would believe that, but you know what? It's really common that people think that they don't deserve things. Well, guess what? If you don't think or believe that you're deserving of it, you're never going to have it in a sustained way. And if there's even a rumble or an echo inside of you, that communicates to you that you're not deserving of good things, you got to get into that. You got to get into that and clear that. And in another lesson in the student portal, we actually talk about things that you can do to clear energetic obstacles and specific to money. So make sure that you look into that. But you're going to want to make sure that you are getting in there to look at what you feel yourself to be. Because unless you believe it's possible, as we said, Unless you believe you're deserving of it, you will not have it. What's the truth here? 
The truth is, money loves you. Ah! Money loves you. Prosperity flows to you. Abundance surrounds and connects with you. You are an infinite creator and you always have the resources to create. That's the truth. It's not about earthly deserving. It's about your divine nature as creator here to create and having everything you need to do so. You do deserve to make money. And that's the truth. Next is the idea that I'm just not good with money. Have you ever said that? Have you ever heard anybody else say that? I've heard other people say that about money. And you know what? It's true. Because again, as a man speaks, so he is. And if you don't think you're good with money, you're not going to be good with money. But let me ask you a question. Were you born into this world knowing how to walk? Were you born into this world knowing how to talk or even knowing how to go potty? <laughs> no, you had to learn. You had to amass the training and the skills. And maybe you don't have great financial acumen right now, but that doesn't mean you can't amass the skills. All you have to do is be willing to learn. And as you move in your purpose, and as you build your business, and as you see the way money flows to you because you're in the vibration of your purpose and your light, you will learn how money works for you. And also, as you learn the laws of money, you're going to figure out how you can work with money successfully for yourself. So just because right now you might not have a great intelligence and knowledge around money doesn't mean that next month you can't or that next year you can't because you can. It's all about your willingness to learn. All right. We discussed some of the common misconceptions that we have around money. Now let's talk about the laws of money, the nature of money, the use of money, and how we should relate to it. Now, I'm going to give you eight quick laws of money. I received these straight out of Joe Vital's book called Money Loves Speed. <laughs> Don't you love that title? Money Loves Speed. And it's true. That's one of the laws of money. And so let's get into these eight laws so that we can pivot away from that which does not serve and align with that which does. The first law of money is money loves speed get into it. What do I mean by that? When spirit is inspiring us to move, when spirit is asking us to commit to the path of our purpose, we should move. When we act on inspiration, when we do not hesitate, money will always find us to support the movement of the manifestation. And yet, when we hesitate, when we second guess, when we doubt ourselves, money stalls. Now, I'm not talking about impetuous, risky investments or buying into yet another MLM. Absolutely not. I'm talking about when spirit moves, when higher self compels us to walk the path of our purpose. When we're feeling that inspiration, let's not hesitate because that's how the money finds us. Money loves speed. Money also loves, second law, Freedom. And so to the extent that we have blocks, energetic, mental obstructions within us that keep us from having a healthy relationship with money, we ought to work on that. We ought to do what we can to clear them. Again, get into the lesson that will help you to do that because money loves freedom. Money is an energy and the natural state of energy is to flow. And so obstacles restrict flow. Where there are obstacles, remove them and the money flows to you. The next law of money is money loves to be appreciated. Do you know there are people who actually take out the dollar bills from their wallets, the fives, the twenties, the hundreds, and they handle these bills with such care? They actually talk to these dollar bills and some people actually kiss them. Oh. It's a little germy for me, but like maybe not for you. Some people actually kiss them. But the point is people actively are appreciating their money. Human beings have a tendency to complain about what they don't have. 
complain about the money they don't have in their account, as opposed to appreciating the money they do have and also the things that money affords them. Money buys the food on your table, everybody. Money buys the clothing that you wear. Money's paying for your vehicle and paying for your home. Are you taking the time to be grateful and to interact directly with your money to say thank you? Because gratitude is high vibration and it is replicative. Meaning, the more we move in gratitude, pointing it at our money and our business, the more we grow that money and that business. So appreciate your money. Appreciate what you have. The next law of money is money loves attention. Money loves when you know what money's doing for you, coming from that high vibrational divine aspect. And so I ask you, do you know how much money you have in your wallet right now? Do you know how many dollar bills and fives and twenties you have? Do you know how much money you have in your savings account or in your checking account or in your retirement account? Money loves when we pay attention to it and work with it and understand it. That's how money grows for us. The next law of money is money loves energy. And in specific, money loves good energy. Money loves the high vibration. And when you're in alignment with your purpose, and when you're healthy, and when you're getting enough water, and when you're happy, and intentional about your joy, money effortlessly finds you. The higher the vibration, the more in alignment with your purpose you are, the more money you will have. Next, money loves circulation. Again, money moves, money flows. It is an energy. Now, if you have money, but you hoard it, you're doing so from a fear response. You're doing so from a belief of scarcity or lack, and that restricts or prohibits more money coming in. Money likes to flow out and money likes to flow in. The more movement there is with money, the more of that money moves into your life experience. Next, money loves respect. Put some respect on money's name, everybody, because money opens doors. Money allows you to network. Money gives you that energetic landscape. Money affords access. And so we respect money. We have that understanding and that relationship with money. The last law of money is money loves a mission. And that, my friends, that's right up our alley. We came here to do something with our lives. And that something is powerful. And when we are fully embodying our mission, our vision, and again, that divine nature concept of self, when we are standing in that money loves us, we are a magnet for money. Money flows effortlessly into our life experience. And so do what you love, because if you do that, money will always support you. Those are the eight laws of money. That's the truth about money. Let me end by saying that we should not make a moral judgment about money. Money's not good. It's not bad. Money's not good. It's not evil. Money is neutral. It is a tool. And you are the master of your experience. You are the master of that tool. So allow money to work for you and allow yourself to understand that you are a money and a success magnet. Can I get an amen? <laughs> and so it is. <laughs>